monitoring that throughout the night. Um, again, also a reminder that we're recording this session and all of the previous sessions, finally, hallelujah, are available to watch or rewatch on our website, halakukua.org. I'm going to stop sharing this screen now because, and if you want to see the speaker um, bigger, um, please switch over to the speaker view and that should help. All right, now I did that and that's not helping, but <laughs> it should help. And it, it can be found on the upper right hand corner. So sort of an introduction of tonight's talk. Um, as I've said at, all, at other times, here at Halakukuo Manoa, we believe in a whole person approach to health. So, so far we've talked about our physical health, both with the um, cooking demonstration by Brent and Miley, and also with Dr. Izuka's um, two part series on COVID facts and how to live with COVID uh, for the foreseeable future. And we've also talked about emotional health um, with Dr. Mili. And in tonight's session, we'll be talking about our financial health. So when lockdown restrictions occurred, uh, maybe you worked for a company which was shut down for an extended period of time, or maybe it's even closed down for good now. Um, your pay might've been reduced, or maybe you lost your job entirely. Or maybe your job is fine right now, but you're worried about the future and what the economy will look like next year. It could also be that maybe you're one of those uh, people who never had their finances in order and this time and the uncertainty of this time has really woken you up to the need for proactive financial planning. Whatever your situation, we know that financial insecurity is a big source of anxiety in today's world and made much worse by the pandemic. So in tonight's session, Kenneth will talk about why we have financial challenges and what we can learn from them. He'll also teach us how to set a foundation to thrive during a crisis using biblical principles. So a little introduction of our speaker today. Um, I'm getting to know him a little bit better uh, throughout this series. Kenneth McGinnis uh, has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, which may seem unexpected for someone who is now a financial guru. He also has a master's degree in business administration with a concentration in entrepreneurship. He now has his own financial education and accountability program called Weapons Management and has clients around the world. But when he and his wife were first married, they were $180,000 in debt. They were able to become debt free in just a few years using some of the principles that he will teach you today. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Kenneth McGinnis. Kenneth, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am here. Okay, great. So uh, first of all, thank you for the, uh, the awesome introduction. It's always um, an honor and a blessing to just be used for any type of uh, anything in life. So um, just to be able to speak to you guys is an awesome opportunity. So um, thank you for setting this up for me and uh, allowing me to speak today. And um, I'm hoping that I, I bring value to everyone in this time, uh, not just as, as, she, as Jane mentioned already, not just about health, but at the same time, uh, wealth. Uh, wealth is really important. A lot of people are stressed on this time due to the fact that, you know, you know people are losing jobs, you know, uh, cutbacks, you know, some people that own property, which I do, uh, the tenants aren't playing. So that causes drama. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'll probably gonna take care of that more in the questioning part because um, I mean, let y'all ask some questions if you, if any of you guys own property. But um, what I'm gonna talk about today is just basically setting a foundation to make sure that you're financially set and stable and content. Not working. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and lead into my discussion. Share. So once again, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity and um, the privilege to speak to you guys about uh, my company. At the same time, share some of the principles, which is the reason why I believe I was invited because my principles are very well rooted in scriptures and biblical um, and biblical principles. So um, weapons management, you know, founded three years ago, um, and my mission is to empower people to change their position in their lives by focusing on on what they really need to create an authentic and abundant society. So my, my vision goes well beyond finances, but it's actually help, finance helps you get to that abundant society and that authentic. So, cause you now, once you have the wealth you need, you can act out and do the things that you truly are passionate about. 
So, so to make sure I hit it home, I open up this, dis oh crap, sorry about that. I like to open up this discussion by talking about thriving during crisis. And the reason why I wanna show this is because I wanna give proof because um, everybody say a diamond is, is tested under pressure, right? You know, um, the, in order for things to grow, you have to put it under heat and pressure. So during this COVID-19 crisis, the thing is, is that when this crisis hit, I was really, really concerned about what was gonna to happen to my resources and my finances. And actually I knew this was gonna be a great test for me. So as you can see from March to June, I was still, my, my, at, my net worth was still growing at a steadily pace throughout the whole crisis. So what it did is allow me to test and confirm that my foundation was solid. Now, a lot of you guys are probably asking, how are you doing this? Because the stock market crashed. And this is gonna be my point throughout the whole discussion is that I don't just focus on the stock market, I focus on many more things. But at the same time, the foundation is the most important part. So as um, Jane missing already, uh, me and my wife, we got married in 2004, we had about $200,000 in debt. And in 2008, we were already debt free. Now, the, pre the reason why I was debt we became debt free is because we just took, we, we were very adamant and we were very persistent about getting out of debt. And of course, at that time, the church I was going to, we were doing a, a debt free uh, ministry and we were doing Crown Financial and a couple other courses, which kind of gave me that fire to get out of debt. But as soon as I got out of debt, the first year after getting out of debt, I started, I wanted to give back. I just had to give back because I wanted to share people what I did and I want to show people they can do it too. So I started teaching Dave Ramsey in 2009. And in a very following year, because I learned a lot of my stuff from Crown Financial, I started teaching Crown Financial when I was in Korea and we got certified so that we can teach also the biblical text of it. Because Dave Ramsey and Crown Financial are two different types of vehicles, but they both are, both, they both are well grounded into scriptures. So that's just, this hence the reason why my, my concept is really uh, grounded in scripture as well. Hmm. So uh, I've been, I've still been teaching this, uh, teaching Dave Ramsey to this day. And I started back in 2009 and I have never stopped. And okay, never mind. I'm getting my slides all mixed up. And, um, and after teaching this, I actually started spreading, develop my own format. And my format wasn't really truly authentic then. It was just more of a the principles and slides and stuff, things that I want to present to the audience. And I had my first church invitation, which was at Manoa. And I think this was back in 2017. Um, so before weapons existed, I actually was given presentations about this before. So it was a, definitely a blessing to do that. And that's actually when I started noticing that I had a concept and I, I started formatting even more. And, and there are some areas in the financial industry that I decided to get my license in due to the fact that I want to make sure I really, really knew the financial industry because I wanted to make sure that what I was teaching was, was, was legit and it worked. So what I, what I learned over time is that if I give you scriptures all day, that is not going to give you fundamentals. So I want to make sure that I give you the foundation, but also I give you the practical how to apply these things to your life. So as I was doing my research and throughout my times, um, I, like I said, I've been doing this since 2008. So we all have financial challenges and, 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 it's, and it's very common for everyone. Now, the thing is, when it comes to financial challenges, the question is, what kind of mindset you have when you have a financial challenge? Are you inspired? Are you desperate? Are you searching for another way to get out? Or are you just comfortable and everything's good? Now, the reason why this is extremely important is because when, if your, if your mindset is comfortable, then you, you can continue to do what you need to do but you need to still search for some, some type of vehicles that's gonna help you to sustain your lifestyle. But if you're inspired, desperate, or searching for more, you might wanna go seek out other options and other venues to increase your assets. Now, a lot of times in a financial industry, in which, and I don't know if any of you guys had experience, it takes a lot of faith because there's a lot of manipulation out there these days. So okay. you first wanna make sure you have a good foundation in faith. And then you also wanna make sure you understand risk. A lot of people think, you know, they want something non-risky. So what everybody do is they get in a savings account. And that's not always the smartest thing to do because your return is nothing. It's not, it's not that great. However, there is risk that's, well, that's worth taking if you can see the return. And what I do is I make sure I, I teach you risk management. So then that gives you that understanding. And then I talk about how much you're earning. Can you earn more than you spend? Because a lot of times people are not good managers. And then we talk about managing cash flow. Oh, 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 oh. So the question is, why do we have financial crisis? 
And the reason why we have financial crisis usually is behavior. Behavior is one of the number one things. It always takes discipline. And the thing is, our industry cares less about our discipline. Our industry is, is, is in the business of making money. We're in, a, we're in a capitalist country. So guess what? They want us to spend, spend, spend. So the industry do not care about your behavior. They just want to make their money so they can be wealthy while you be broke. So the thing is, can you change your, your views on things and create a, a disciplined behavior so that you can manage your resources better? So if you manage your resources better, you get over your mismanagement of your resources. And then you have to look at your current income. It's a, big, it's a thing that I, even Dave Ramsey said, you always gotta have a big shovel. If you don't have a big shovel, then what I do is I talk to people and you also wanna learn at what do you have, from what the income you do have, what can you do with it and how much can you save? And then if you have too much debt, which is one of the things I can't stand, then we gotta talk about how do you get out of debt? So these are the number one reasons why people are, are facing financial crisis, especially during COVID-19. Because thing is, if you were in any of these situations, the, the, the heat turned up on you. And right now, the goal is to get out of these situations prior to a crisis so that that graph I was showing you earlier, if you get the sooner you can get out of this type of crisis and get a strong foundation, the sooner you can thrive even through a crisis. So how do you get, how do you get out of, how do you uh, resolve these issues? Basically, you've got to get financially educated. As I mentioned throughout to, back in 2008 is when we got out of debt and I started learning more and more about financial management how to manage my resources, what does the Bible say is about uh, finances, because that was really important because I didn't trust the media or the news. So I got a lot of financial education from scripture, but at the same time from the industry. And then you want to have a financial coach or a mentor, someone that's actually proving that someone that's actually doing it, walking the walk, not just talking the talk. And then the main point of all this is getting a financial plan. A lot of people say, hey, I want to start my own company or I want to, you know, I want to increase my wealth. Well, do you know your net wealth? Do you know your cash flow? If you don't know those things, you need to learn those things. So the thing is, get, educate, get educated, find someone that can push you a little farther and get a plan. And then eventually you will develop management skills because you will have knowledge and knowledge will teach you how to manage because sometimes we don't know how to manage anything in life if we don't have the knowledge. So this is how I look at a foundation and this is the goal that I wanna get, get across to you guys today is that you have to learn about real diversification. When people say put it in a mutual fund and let it ride out, that's called cash flow. That's called um, dollar cost average. That's, that's cool. That's okay. It's to ride the roller coaster of the stock market. But is that really the truly diversified? No, it's not. Because when the market went down, I mean, many of you guys that have money in the stock market, your money went down too. So you have to find other venues, other alternative investments, other private investments that actually works. And, I, and it's, there's plenty out there and it's with this technology and error because you know, now we can do it and I teach these things because I want people to understand this is the risk and this is your return on your investments. So now you become really diversified and then at the same time, I am teaching you how to control assets. Controlling assets is extremely important because a lot of times people think that when they put money away, that's, that you put it in a more fiat format, but if you can put it into a tangible asset, you can create a stream of income. And that's the, also the other agenda too, is to create multiple stream incomes. So you have to start thinking these ways because right now old school ways, just put it away and, and walk away and let it ride. Now you need to look at things that are more, more tangible, the things that create a stream of income and the things that actually are tangible. To, to the more tangible, the more predictable it is and actually believe it or not, the less risk it is. And then throughout that, once I, as I said before, now you become a better manager because now you're gonna see, you, you're just gonna, it's just gonna be a good, Everything's going to be right in front of you. You're going to have a plan. You're going to have a vision. You're going to have something that's, that's working for you. You can see something rolling over here while you got this investment over there. And now you are actually managing your resources as we all are supposed to do. So I always like to use the elevator as a way to explain why I teach this. It's because a lot of times what happens is that people get in an elevator and they got one cable. You cut that one cable, you're dead. Every elevator has at least a dozen cables. So why do we live our life that way? We live our life with one cable, and this is how we live our life, with an income. That's it. Now, the thing is, I'm not condemning anybody for doing that, but the thing is, that's the only way we're taught. Get a, go to school, get a good job, and save, save, save. The thing is, though, why are you saving? What are you, how are you, what are you doing to create another income? How are you putting that money away that can actually do something for you, make it really work for you? So stock markets, nothing wrong with that at all. 
Stock markets is another good vehicle, but then you got income in the stock market. If stocks go down, you keep your income, that's great, but then you just lost. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people don't trust the stock market. So what do you do outside of that? Well, you have an investment in notes. There are many varieties of notes. Notes is a little different than a bond, but you have so many options. And then you have businesses. I highly, I mean, th th it's something that, um, that is not, people don't have the time sometimes to do a business, but if you find a little small hobby, you know, you know, like sell, like I sell hats and stuff like that, or, you know, or sell, you know, sell, sell something at, a, at an ice cream stand or something. If you have something that you're passionate about that you want to do on the side, give it a try, put, you know, make some money behind it, create it, you know, get a 1099 income. And actually, you know, you got write-offs for your house. So that's the reason why you want to do a business. It's not really just to, so you can be extremely profitable. You want to make it profitable. But the thing is the tax write-offs actually helps you in the, in the long run. And then of course, real estate, um, everybody not into real estate, but actually, every wealthy person I know are in, they are in the real estate. And the funny thing is one of my favorite jokes is that there's only, everybody know the word estate and it's only one word that has the word real in front of it and that's real estate. So the reason why I, I teach this way is because the thing is, if anybody have seen the cash flow quadrant before, you have the E and the S and the B and the I. The E and the S is your active side of, of working. That means it's, a, it's, it's your job, it's your day-to-day, -day, nine to five income, active, you have to be there. And the thing is, we all one day want to retire, or we all one day, one day want to have the option to retire. So the goal is to try to figure out how do you get them to be in the I side of it. Now, the thing is, most people that teach this cash flow quadrant, they teach that you go from the E and you just try to go all the way to the B and I and you stay there and that's all you worry about. Well, the thing is, it's not that simple because it's the risk that goes along with that. So like I said, I'm very, I, I teach risk management very well because I, my goal is to teach you, keep your job, learn how to make a B and I work for you. And that way, now you have income coming in from both the E, the B, and the I. Now, when I got into this industry, I knew I loved it and I was passionate about it. Yes, I'm an engineer, but I love numbers. So that's why I like finances. And I understood that if I go for, for a blown, that I was, might be a, a struggling financial advisor or something like that. So I continually do my job, but I also have a lot of investments and I have my own entity. And the thing is to not struggle with it and, and, and feel like I didn't have the faith to go all in, if you look at Ecclesi 11, 6, it says, work in the daytime and do not let your hands go idle at night. So, though, so that may one or both may prosper. You can look it up. So now that I learned that, cool, I'm in line with scripture. So I'm going to keep rolling and keep doing what I, I need to do. But the goal is to teach you how to create active income and have passive income at the same time where they work in simultaneously and you're not worrying about your income and you're increasing your income and your savings and your investments. That's the goal. So the name weapons, um, I edited this slide. I, I have a, um, another slide that's for strictly for clients. So since you guys are recording, I'm only going to share this one for today. But weapons actually is an acronym. It stands for wealth, education, accumulation, passive income options. So it's a process. The wealth, in order to gain wealth, you have to be educated first. The education comes with the plan. When I teach you and go through a plan with you, not only do I get educated, but you get educated. So now we're in a team of educating each other on your situation. That way we both know what you're dealing with and I know what you're dealing with. And now we can make some recommendations and make some decisions. Then after we have that plan, we can get your debt free date, we can get your cash flow, and we can get your financial independent number, which is pretty much the number that you need to retire one day. Once you get your financial independent number, then you can talk about the accumulation stage. Accumulation is how much money you put away, and then what vehicles you can put it in so that that money can grow to get to that accumulation uh, number, which is your financial independent number. Now, the last part is really the, the passive income. Now, the point in, 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 like, in the passive income is the point of that is really to make sure that even though you are accumulating your assets, if you do it, in, if you do it simultaneously, you have your, your financial independent number, but then you still have this vehicle of passive income growing throughout your time to the point where if you do it just right, you can live off that passive income and the income that you accumulated can be there for an emergency. That's my strategy and that's how I teach. So now you have options, which is pretty much where I got the name weapons from. So that is the pretty much the name of my company. So I know I, the first time I got a venue at, um, at the church on Hickam here in, in Hawaii, they thought I was teaching about weapons. No, it's actually a financial company. So in my Facebook page, it says financial weapon management so that people don't get confused. But I like to focus on the principles. So anybody I talk to, I can teach you that stuff. That's great. 
but we have to have a strong, strong foundation in order for us to get there because the one thing we have in this world is uncertainty. So to create some certainty, we gotta come up with goals. So I do goal setting with everybody. This is legitimately my goal sheet. And I've been using this for over 10 years. And the thing that I noticed about it when I was using it is that I had my daily goals to keep me on track so that I had some certainties in my habits so I can achieve some short-term goals. And then I had my long-term goals and my long-term goals actually was coming to fulfillment because I was achieving them. And then I also realized that this is totally in line with Habakkuk 2 2. It says, write the vision down and make it plain on the tablet that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet at an appointed time. So when I started seeing that, it was kind of confirmation that this scripture works, but it was actually my activity was proven this scripture. So it wasn't me like, oh yeah, try the scripture and hoping it, you know, and have faith. No, it actually was working. So it was confirmation. Um, then from the planning side, I'm a big believer in tithing. Um, so usually when I work with clients, I always try to make sure they're tithers because I know Murphy likes to come or certainty is around the corner. So anything can happen. In my opinion, I think that God could put a protective hinge around you when you're a great tither. Now, here's my thing about tithing. Tithing is not about your obligation from God and it's not about salvation. I've actually gotten biblical debates with people when I was in Korea and all over the place. I studied enough. I even looked up Nehemiah 13 when, the, um, when they talked about tithing there. And the thing is, in Malachi 3.10, what made me start to become a tither was the fact that when I read Malachi 3.10, it says, test me. So if any of you guys are not a tither, give them a chance, see what happened. But my last point on tithing is this. A lot of people look at tithing as a religious thing. If you really pay attention to the scripture, tithing is a management thing because if you can give, God gave you that money to, to, to prosper and to take care of your family. But if you're able to shelf off that 10%, you have to be a great manager to do that because 10%, no matter how much money you make, that's a good chunk. So now that you're managing it so well that you're able to tithe, you become a good manager and everybody at that job or in their career and their life know if you're a good manager, you get what? More responsibility. So if you're a good manager, it's just a phenomenon that you get more resources. So realize tithing is not an obligation from God, but I, I would behoove you not to try because the thing is, if you're a good tither, things do happen because you're managing your resources and you're not going to be a good, you're not going to be a good tither unless you're a good manager already. So most of you that are tithing right now, you probably got your resources under control but this is the reason why you want to stay tight and be a tighter. So, and then another thing that steals from tithing is usually your debt. So a lot of times people are not tithing because of debt. And the thing is, I, I look at debt in this way, meaning debt is, is a necessary need for real estate and even sometimes for your vehicle. But the thing is we have to learn it, debt as, it, as, it, as what it is. Our, our industry teaches that debt, you know, you're buying an asset. As long as that asset is owned by the bank, it's not yours. So during COVID-19, if, if people lost their job and they had a car and they had a loan on it, they lost the car. If they had a house and they had a mortgage on it, they probably lost the house. So you got to realize that debt is not, debt is not, it's not yours yet. So you're, you're kind of, you're not, you're kind of creating a, a false, a, you know, a, a false image. You're, you're creating a counterfeit life as you have these things. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just realizing until you own that house, it's not yours. So you might want to look at it and run, you know, and, and run and, and strive really hard to get out of debt. It's still extremely important. So I always like to use Luke 14, 28. Suppose one of us want to sit down and build a tower. Will we not first sit down and count the cost and see, uh, estimate the cost to see if we have enough to complete it? The issue in most of the, and like I said, in the industry, they want you to buy, buy, buy. They don't want you to sit down and count the cost. They want, you to, they want you to go take another loan because guess what? Guess who, get riches off, guess who get rich off those loans? The banks, not you. So you do become the, 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 um, the, 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 the lender, the, 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 the debt. Ah, I can't think of the scripture for some reason. Basically, you become, you become servant to the lender, basically. So when you, take a debt, when you take a loan, you become servant to the lender. So bottom line is realize debt is not always the best thing, but it does help. But most people do show off their houses and cars like they own it and it's not theirs. So bottom line is find ways to get out of debt. And what I do is I show you how to get out of debt and show you your debt free date. So you have a plan on how you're going to attack that debt because being out of debt is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But the thing is, once you get out of debt, a lot of times people don't know what to do. And if you go back to Nehemiah in this one, on this case, 
you will see when people return from from um, from Babylon and went back to Jerusalem and they were building the wall, the first thing they did is they put their children in debt. So how do you get rid of debt? So you've got to learn how to do the snowball. The snowball is phenomena. It's, it's a phenomena principle because it's basically you're, you're paying down debt faster. And a lot of times people don't understand it because they don't understand that you're actually saving a lot of money. Because what happens is that people will get a, take all their loans and they will pay off one loan. And when they pay off that loan, they say, oh, I got $220 now. I can save that every month and put it away. Well, how about we try to use that money to pay down your loan? But no, I can save it. Well, let me show you why you want to do that. So you want to put it on the next loan. Because now you can pay it off faster. And then once you finish paying off that, you put that money on the next loan. So a lot of people probably heard the debt stacking or debt snowball before. But I don't know if you even see the numbers in it and, and how it works. As, as long as you keep paying, using the same amount of money you was paying in a, from the start, you pay up that loan so much faster. So originally, if you were just paying off and you saved that money, you would only pay it off in 23 years. And you're going to pay $214,000 in debt. Money that's gone is not coming back to you at all. But if you do the debt stacking, and, those, and the person that think they can save, you will save. Here's why. Because if you do the debt stacking, you will actually pay it off in eight years. That's like, that's like uh, 15 years faster. So now that you paid it off, now you just saved $130,000 in interest that you would have paid out to the bank. And now that's your savings. So instead of you seeing that you want to see, you want to see that save that $220 or that 500 or that $330, um, uh, $53, you want to pay it down faster so that in the back end you have all that savings. And now the money that you were putting in towards debt now can go towards an investment. So what does that look like? Let's say you invest at $2,720 a month and you, and, you can, and you can gain 9%. And I got investments where I make 9%. By the time you, by the time you reach 65, that is $2 million. So you want to look at the, the debt snowball as a serious instrument to use. Now, let's say you don't have a lot of money and let's say you just want to start saving something. Well, the time of horizon does work. Cat, um, dollar cost averaging does work. If you put a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit, you know, a little bit at a time, it does help. So it is, al it is always wise to put a little bit away at a time. So let's say this individual put $200 away a month. If you put $200 away a month, by the time you reach 65, you will almost reach a million dollars just with $200 a month. Now, the time of horizon means that you want to do it sooner than later because over time, if you don't wait, if you don't do it sooner than later, you lose out on $83,000. Now, people like myself, I went to college, and like many of you guys probably went to college, got a big old college loan, we all, we all did it, and that's why I, got, that's why I paid that, those loans off so I can start saving my money. But it happens to the best of us, and guess what? We also miss out on savings because the thing is, we didn't have the time to put the money away because we was focused on college and, and other things. And then some people, they just want to be stubborn, just like the guy in Luke 19, 11 through 23, when God gave them, gave them um, manna and told them to invest until he comes back. And the one that he gave the one talent to did not invest because he thought God was going to be do, deal with him cruelly. So God took his investment and gave it to the others. And those that, it did inv that, those that did invest got more in return. So this is no different. And that would be this guy missing out on $700,000 in interest or in, or in money. So the biggest thing that I always hear from everybody is that you know, I don't make it. I hear sometimes people like, well, I got a small job. I don't make that much money. Well, it's really not about how much you make. It's actually about how much you can keep. So the, the reason why you want to have a plan, because the plan can give you an idea of what you can keep, what you can save, and how can you make your money work for you? Because even if you only make $30,000 a year, you're still going to make over a million dollars in your 40 years. So the goal is to learn these kind of things so that you can let your money work for you and keep it. And that's the hardest thing because the industry, like I mentioned before, the industry do not want you to keep your money. The industry wants you to spend your money. So you got to take this thing seriously. You got to look at it from, hey, this is this is a battle to sustain yourself so that you can have a comfortable life in the future. Because we all are facing this crisis of uh, uh, facing the crisis of this world that they are now making things harder and harder to make money to keep money, and then eventually all of us going to be working until we eighty. So the sooner you find set a strong foundation, the sooner you actually can build your own wealth and actually 
live comfortably, and actually reach your financial independent number. So these are um, some things that I give, I do um, provide to our clients. So this is a financial plan. The fin in this financial plan, it shows your cash flow, it shows your net worth, and it gives you your percentages of all your savings, your living expenses, and your taxes. Once you know this information, like I said, it gives you education because now you can kind of get a good picture of are you spending too much money? Do you have too much debt? Do you need to save a little bit more? Your financial, your net worth is strictly just the number that it is at that moment. As I was showing that chart earlier, the first chart I showed you was are my net worth going up. That's the goal. And a lot of times, if you want to look back at your net worth, how has your net worth moved over time? Because if, if your net worth is staying steady, you're not creating traction. And the goal is to create traction because like, like I mentioned before, we're all going to be wait, working really late in our days if we don't figure out how to do this. And to get out of debt, we, we, what, like I mentioned before, we show you, um, we calculate all your, all your debt and all your information. We show you how much you're paying in each month. Just like I mentioned before, this person will get out of debt October 2043. With the debt stacking and actually putting a $200 extra on his debt, this person now is going to get out of debt in December 2023 and save $12,000 in interest. So this is why this education and this information is very important because now you have a plan. So now if you stick with this plan, you'll be out of debt in 2023, and now you will have that 1,700 that you can do something with. And then we can talk about that. And then we can tell you how you can do that. Now, for your financial dependent number, the financial dependent number is extremely important because everybody don't realize that, I mean, now Hawaii is a different beast, but the average person to live financially independent you have to have at least $2 million or more. I have, I've, I've seen very few people that, ha, that has been lower than that, and usually because they are getting Social Security or they live in just really, they, they live in with someone. But nine times 10, your, your financial dependent will be about $2 million. So it's, it's important to know this. Why? Because if you know this, the plan would actually show you how much money you need to put away each month to reach that goal. So once again, the plan is important. So even if you're not even doing cash flow strategies and you just put money away and just saving a little here and there and doing the um, Dallas cost averaging, at least you know you can reach your goal or you have the potential to reach your goal. So what I have in addition to the plan is I also do a financial literacy course. The financial literacy course talks about bonds, stocks, mutual funds, you know, saving, getting out of debt. How, you know, once I will cover once I, the um, debt snowball again, but I cover a, a few items to make sure you have a good understanding on how to do it and when you make actions or when you take, uh, when you take a course of action, you know what you're doing and what you're about to get yourself into. So I make sure I give you strong education on how the financial industry works so that you can make a wise decision. Then I talk about tax and credit. Taxes and credit is, uh, I, I, I actually get, I have a CPA and I still go to, Lord, I go to my accountants for tax advice but I know enough to make sure you understand the fundamentals and the foundation, because if you know that, now you know your, your, how much you owe in taxes each year. And I have a presentation where I show you, you can calculate your own taxes and know how much tax liability you have per year before you even get in the tax season, which, which is a great thing to know, so that when you go to your accountant, now you have information ahead of time on how much tax liability you have. Now the tax accountant or the CPA is going to just try to figure out how to deduct those taxes and how to give you some credits. And then of course, speaking of credit, Credit is extremely important because, as I mentioned before, I, I'm not a fan of debt, but we do have to um, get a loan most of the time for our house. So it's, it's great. It's a good idea to have a high, a high credit score so that when you do get that loan, at least you have a lower loan, a lower per, um, interest rate. And then the last course is basically how to become a Henry. How to become a Henry means high earner, not rich yet. The issue, and as I mentioned uh, earlier when I was talking about, um, it's not about how much you make, but how much you can keep. In many cases, most people don't make that much money. So the goal is just to give you options and teach you ways to develop your own business or ways to create extra income so that you can have more income and become a little bit more wealthier than what you are right now. So all these things I do provide for all my clients. And today I will be giving, I'll be giving some of these out complimentary based on some questions that I'm gonna ask. And of course, finally, I have a shameless plug for my, my um, weapons gear. Uh, as I created this company and set the foundation, um, this logo uh, came about and I've been blessed to come up with such an awesome logo. But um, 
over the time I realized this is my company's weapons. It just kind of, it was just interesting. I figured it was, Hey, second Corinthians 10, you know, our weapons, not carnal. And then you got Isaiah uh, 54, 17, no weapon formed against me. So I figured I'd make a shirt and be able to promote it to our clients. And uh, when people become clients, I usually uh, give them a shirt. So here's, here's what I do provide for everybody. Uh, whether a client, not client is that my goal is to give you a wealth plan. That wealth plan includes giving you a debt-free day, helping you save, uh, develop saving goals, giving you a protection plan, because I actually, I actually am able to give help with insurance, legal plan, identity theft, and then possibly give you additional financial education where you can probably make some extra money. And of course, show you where you can put money away and you're going to actually make three to 10%. And that's not a make, that's not a mistake there. I actually invest in a lot of things that makes well over 10, over, well over 3%. So um, that, I think that concludes my presentation. So bottom line is that if we go back to it, you gotta get out of debt. You gotta, you, you gotta learn how to manage. You gotta learn how to plan. And you gotta be disciplined and have a plan in general. So I think that concludes my discussion and I'm gonna open it up for questions. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, he wants, if you guys feel comfortable, please just unmute yourself and you can ask questions. If you want to write your questions down in the chat box, I can read it out for you. Um, either way, do it. And then we could do your giveaways um, towards the end more. You want to do that? Yes. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> can I ask a Hello. question? Hi. Okay, you know, for the, the chart where the income was 30,000, 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, and then on the other column was 1.2 mil, 2, 3.2, and 4, and times 40 years. What is the percent interest rate are we talking about? That was talking about, and I think it was shown at 9%. Nine? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And, and trust me, believe it or not, that is very, very possible. I mean, even, even in the stock market, it's very, very possible right now. Uh, right now, the stock market is very iffy, but um, it's very possible in there. It's just that the only thing about the stock market is when you, is, is more of the time, is, is more timing when you re remove your funds from the stock market. Any more questions? Andy, yeah, Kenneth, uh, yes. I, I have a quick question. Okay. So do you have a, I think, I think it's important to have a budget, right? And budget means the income and the expenses uh, that's predictable. Now, do you have any suggestions, easy ways of doing that? Do you still suggest old school paper or do you have any app recommendations that would be easy to do uh so i am like like um I, I totally recommend the plan first uh so a lot of times people do a budget but the budget tells you how much you know it's kind of shows your cash flow so in that plan when i talk about cash flow that is actually your budget the thing is though when you do a budget okay now you have three hundred thousand three hundred dollars or maybe a thousand dollars extra cash flow so now what you got a budget. Okay. Now, cause what most people do when they just have a budget, they go, well, I got this wiggle room now. So if I want to overspend a thousand bucks, I can and not think about, well, what's your plan? So I recommend first having a plan that tells you the whole story. And then as you manage your resources and you budget, I'm a person, I'm a big believer on not old school paper because old school, old school paper is going to get a, uh, it's kind of going to get um, neglected eventually. So I, rec I recommend spreadsheets. And I do recommend a few websites. And one website, okay, one website will be Personal Capital and the other one will be Mint. Those will be the two websites I use because I use those constantly. Thank you. 
And uh, Mint does have a, an app as well, right? So you can. Yes. So both Mint and, um, and Personal Capital, you can uh, both put them on your phone. And and when you go when you go in there, like Personal Capital, that's my app right there. I can go ahead and just log in. And um, what you do is you link your accounts. Now, if some of you guys are worried about, well, I don't want anybody knowing all my information, it's already on the internet. All this, all this is doing is just shoving it into one site where you can actually see it and monitor your, your money. That's it. Now, be warned, once you go in there, they're gonna, try, they're gonna try to email you, try to market it there, try to get you to invest with them and their companies and so forth. But you can always say no, or you can always entertain them and see whether they can offer you something great. What, what is that, Min, M-I-N? M-I-N-T, Mint. Oh, like thank you. Thank you. I think personal, my, my personal opinion, I use both, but uh, I think personal capital is a better vehicle. Have you heard of every dollar? I don't know if you've... It's... Yes, I have. Um, so every dollar is a Dave Ramsey tool. Um, and it's funny because, I, like I said, I teach Dave Ramsey. Um, now every dollar is becoming now, I think, first of all, I heard they char they're charging for it. That's one thing, so, which is amazing because I'm like, Dave Ramsey, where are you going, man? You're charging for everything. But Mint is more focused on budget not your whole plan. So what Mint and personal capital, I can still see my net worth. I can see my budget. I can, um, I can see what, you know, how much, I can separate my cash from my investments, from my, my assets. It, just, it gives me a whole different picture. And uh, one more question, Kenneth. Uh, so obviously this takes time, right? Uh, it's not yes. gonna just, last you can't do it in five minutes it's going to take time to analyze this how much time on average would you say if you're starting from scratch how much time does it take to um, get to that uh, get to a comfortable place where you're only spending a few hours a week or a few minutes a week so so what i do so like so let me give you give you a scenario when i'm on clients all my clients, I, I do a six month agreement with them. You're gonna meet with me at least every other week for six months to make sure your foundation is solid. If you wanna continue, you can, but I wanna make sure you meet with me six months because the thing is, for you to get everything in order and make some shifts and moves, it's gonna take about six months to get the foundation flowing right because, and, and so going back to what I was saying earlier about everything is digital and you got websites, once you, it's, it's not about, it's not old school anymore. Like you were asking, you were asking me about the, the, the budgeting using a, a old sheet, a, a sheet of paper. You can do everything digitally now these days. So once you get everything set up and put on all the pilot, all the pilot, then you're on your way. But you want first, the first part is getting a plan and understanding your plan. And then the second part is, all right, now get this thing rolling. And then when things change, now it's a, it's more of a pivot move on what do you do when it changes. And of course that goal is having an emergency. I don't, I don't talk about this in this presentation. I talk about it in one of my courses, which I'm gonna offer later on. Um, and the um, financial literacy is you gotta have three buckets. You gotta have an emergency. You gotta have emergency, short term, and of course, long term. So then it's, it's a matter of about making sure you have all three of those buckets ready to go. So it takes time to get that together. So it's not, it's not an overnight, um, but you, if, you, if you're not sure if, you're, if your ground is um, shaky, you you got it. It's, it won't it won't hurt you to, to get some maintenance done and check it. It's like your car going to the maintenance shop. If you your car feels a little shaky that day, you want to take it to the mechanic and say, hey, something's wrong. Like can can you you know realign my tires and so forth, and then they get you back on your way. Thank you. And uh, maybe there's other questions. I'm not sure, Jane. I don't want to take up the full 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 forum. <laughs> You know, Andy said he had a lot of questions. So um, there was one in the chat. What would you recommend um, raise saving up for kids college? I like that one. Uh, so yeah, so I, I have a 529. Um, so you got the cover down, you got the 529. So each one of those depends on which state you're in. Now, the thing is, I think Coverdale goes state by state. 529 is big and broader. They both give you tax write-offs. It's just like, a, it's, it's like a, um, it's a, um, it allows you to, to, to deduct, from, deduct from your taxes. Why am I having such a hard time today? But the thing is, the one thing I just learned about the 529, which I'm probably gonna do for myself because I have one for my daughter. You can also use a 529 for your, school, your, um, your, your, your kids' uh, private school. So they open it up now where it's not just for college anymore. So let's say you don't have money to pay for private school, 
you can dip into your 529 because what's happening is that people are, they, they save for the 529, they can't get a scholarship. And now they're like, well, I'm, I'm just going to take the money out and take the, the tax hit. But now they open it so that way people still can put in 529 and then you can pay towards your, your kid's private school. But 529 is my recommendation over Coverdale. Um, I don't speak on Coverdale too much because I still don't understand it, but I know one is just more state dependent, which is the Coverdale. Any other questions? Um, this is probably jumping out ahead of things, but um, if you don't have if you don't have debt per se, like no credit cards, you don't have car payments, things like that, and you have money set aside, but it's not working for you. What are some go tos? Um, you know, so so obviously I'm speaking from my own experience or, or from my own for myself. So, so I'm young, got four kids, you know, I'm, I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. Basically, um, I don't have a lot of cash flow, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I'm wanting to do something, you know, we sold our house, which was a really hard thing to do. So we're trying to make sure that that money is working for us. Um, so that kind of gives you a little, a little uh, snapshot. So what do you do with the extra that's safe <laughs> yes like the question that's actually the reason why this company was birthed in the first place um it took me a long time when i got out of debt in 2008 i was just saving i had no clue what i was doing i'm mean, still putting money in the stock market ra and i was just stacking money and i like that little spreadsheet i told you i was like oh i'm gonna buy a house one day and it wasn't my money wasn't doing anything for me um there are multiple vehicles and sad but true i'm not not to sound i i, I can't sh share that as those in a public venue uh I'm gonna say like this, there are multiple vehicles out there that you can diversify. There are, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you some names of the, the notes as I mentioned in the real estate and the REITs and, and bonds. Those four things all give you return on investments and they, get, and, they, and, they, and they are safe. I'm gonna say it like that because that's why I can put it out there like that. Those type of vehicles, bonds, REITs, um, notes, and um, in real estate and real estate, well, not real estate, but REITs and real estate is the same thing. Those vehicles are safe vehicles. The thing is you got to find the right kind of ones. And that's what I don't, I, I don't disclose because that be, when I disclose that, because I know the financial industry, you know, people come at you. So what I do is I, when I, with my clients, they invest in all those things I invest in. And that's why I do a contract because that thing is just make sure that, Hey, look, I'm going to teach you this. There are risks, but, by, but you will, all I can say is this. I moved myself over there because like you said, I didn't have anywhere to put my money. And when I realized these vehicles were, they had a little bit of risk, but I can get 8% return. Yeah, I'm gonna put my money over there. <laughs> so that is what I do. I look at those kind of vehicles, bonds, REITs, notes, and those kind of vehicles will give you a return on investment. Because here's the thing, those are, those, are, um, those are payout. Those are dividends that they'll pay you in dividend stocks. So those are dividends. You know, the thing about stocks, dividend stocks is that it's a stock. So even though you might get paid dividends, the stock can go up and down. So really you, you can lose money, but the bonds usually don't go up and down. Notes don't usually go up and down. REITs don't usually go up and down. So all that stuff that you saw in the beginning, that's where all my, a lot of my stuff is. A lot of my stuff is spread throughout those, but it's, it's, it's spread into private companies that do these kind of things, not into the normal market. So I can say that. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can do research on the notes, eat REITs, and um and bonds those are our vehicles and usually money mar money market accounts usually have bonds in them but here's the thing and i'm gonna say it like this the banks are never going to give you a substantial return because they're going to they're going to make that money off that and off your money and they're going to give you your, your your sleazy one or two percent if they even give you that and right now i have one vehicle that i'm using right now that the banks is buying it so it goes to show you it was work, it's been working and the banks finally caught on and now they're, they're trying to take it away from the public. Now, luckily I have more vehicles I use, but it goes to show that what I was, the, the banks are now getting, the banks are hoarding all the income potentials. And all I've been doing is just, I've been, I've been paying attention to them because they've been going on for years. And, it's, and, and, and these are notes, by the way, the banks are buying notes. Thank you, Kenneth. I think that was a, one real good question. Uh, 
right, Jane? A couple good questions. One was, uh, is buying a house in Hawaii a good investment? That's a, you said Hawaii is a beast. Maybe yes. expand on that, on that a little bit. Woo. Okay. Uh, yes, Hawaii is very, very special to me. Um, I, I found it entertaining when I, when I developed this company in Hawaii and I was like, all right, God, what are you trying to show me here? Um, I'm still, tick, I'm still um, stick a shot about Hawaii. Now, if you're here for, you, for your, your lifetime, it's great. Um, I, was the, I, was, I was in the market for one, at one time looking for real estate and I was looking for an investment real estate. Um, you're paying for the location, luxury, and all those things. I do know one person, okay, actually, I do know one person and actually I'm using the same strategy. Hawaii, the only way to get ahead when it comes to real estate is you have to use, and it's, called, it's a company called Sweep Strategy. I actually teach that too. You have to use a strategy like that to, hit, to, to get out fast because, because the, debt, the, the, the debt toll is so high here that it's, it's almost nearly impossible to get there. Now, if you use it, you can chunk at it, but you have to hit it. You have to constantly go at it all the time because there's no, it's no normal snowball for this, this place. That's what I mean by it's a beast. Using a traditional snowball, traditional snowball will get you out of consumer debt, but it won't get you out of real estate debt. That's what I'm saying. So like even for myself, I have property, but I don't have a single property here. And a lot of people, like I said, I was this close to getting one here, but I just couldn't do it. And I, I think I know I could have sold it when I left or I could have rented out, but I know you got the HOA fees and so forth. So it's just an interesting beast. So there is a strategy that can help people get out of debt faster, but you have to be extremely disciplined. And I only have a few people that I know I can teach this to. And you have to be extremely, extremely disciplined because if you're not, I had one client in my Dave Ramsey class and no kidding, they totally screwed it up because they used the, the sweep and they got into more debt. So that's what I'm saying. So if you don't do it right, you're going to get into more debt. Well, Shirley, I mean, who asked the original question, she, she's asking, wouldn't it be better to own than rent in Hawaii? And I'm assuming it's like if you're living here long term. Yeah, if you're living here long term, yes, it's definitely better to buy though. If, you, if you're not going anywhere, buying is fine. It's just that it's going to take, it's going to be a while. That's all. So buying, buying is fine because you have tax breaks and so forth. But um, so yeah, so I definitely, I'm a big believer in yes, you do want to own. But you, I'm going to say it like this. If you, let's say like this, would you, be, would any of you guys be interested? Okay. Let's say you own a house here, you buy and own, and you just happen to have some money or you can learn like it's called pro forma. You can tell, you can Google it. Pro forma is basically you take another house, you get a small mortgage in that and you get a cash, you get a, where it has huge cash flow on the house and you can make another extra $500 on that house. And you know, you learn how to do that and have that money actually put to more chunking, put more money towards your house to help you pay it off. That's stuff that I like to talk about because that is a strategy that's going to help you accelerate paying off that mortgage that you got here. But without that, you're really going to just be constantly just, you got, you're going to be working for a while to get this, to get to that loan. Or, or if I know a lot of people do family home, family homes, let's all your kids put money towards their house. You're going to be hanging around with that mortgage because that Hawaii mortgages are special. So Kenneth, a couple more questions. So, uh, you know, it seems like consumerism has promoted renovations, saying, hey, renovation is you're building equity. So it sounds like a wiser way of doing that is living with what you have, but using that money invested in something else that will grow for you. Uh, anyway, that's, that's a separate topic, but I, we're running down on time. One other important question, and we, we, we said we're not going to promote business but uh, somebody did ask the question what are your fees I think that is a legitimate uh, thing that I, I think it, it, if you feel comfortable okay sharing I think uh, it, it would be good if you could share what your fees are okay so all right so basically I don't charge a fee until I do a plan first 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 thing first if I do a plan I got to make sure you can afford that fee uh, so I do a plan. The, the, the plans are usually free, which I'm going to give those out anyway. Um, if you can afford the fee, the fee is usually 700 bucks. And that's for a whole six months of me walking through massaging your, massaging what you can do. So I have to see potential. 
sad but true. If I don't see potential, then I can, because right now my, my plan, I have a contract where I guarantee you, you're going to make all that in some back. I have a guarantee in my contract that you're going to make that back. So that's why I do it that way, because it's, to me, it's more valuable to either make, to, to, to either show, give you a plan and say, Hey, let's just clean this up or say, Hey, look, you're like, like y'all mentioned earlier. Hey, what if I don't have debt and I got this extra money? Oh, you got this extra cash. Let me show you this. And you're going to make some money and you're going to make that money back for sure. And that's, that's, that's my fee for uh, my coaching. And then, like I said, my coaching is usually six months. May I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, what, what do you mean by mortgages in Hawaii are special? <laughs> they are very, very high. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't, I, it's, it, to this day, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, God haven't given me an ex. I'm actually literally like, what, what, how can I break? I would love to crack this nut here. And like I said, the only, only thing I know that you can do here is the, the sweep strategy. It's a, it, it actually, I have a friend that paid off his mortgage, his, but his thing is his mortgage was only 500,000 when he started it, but he actually got it paid off in a couple of years when he used the sweep strategy. So I do know somebody that used that. Now that's a whole different company, by the way. I know I, I can, I can show you how to do that, but it's a company that teach you that. But the thing is when you, if they're going to teach you that, you're going to pay a nice penny for that thing, by the way. I just want to let you know. But Thank you. So, so you, you can Google that. You can Google that company. They teach the strategy. And I'll tell you right now, that strategy is not bad because I use it. I have one mortgage and I use it for that one mortgage and it's, it, it works. I done chunked that house story down and my tenant's paying for it and it's going to be paid off in five years. And, and the next thing you know, that's all going to be all cash flow as well. Thanks. Thank you. No problem. So what would be a better, okay. Uh, sorry, I think I answered the question about renting and buying. Buying is still a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just that it's, Hawaii is expensive. I mentioned the fees. Um, I, I don't usually like prefer to answer my price because sometimes people get stick it, stick it to shock. But uh, trust me, the stuff I teach is, I know a lot of venues, uh, companies that charge a lot, triple what I, I charge. Um, and then of course, buying in Hawaii is definitely good. 529 is a good vehicle if you want to invest in it. But bottom line is that everything I do, I start with a plan and the plans are always free. So even though I'm going to give out plans today, I want to give out plans to serving you people. Um, if you come back later on and you want to sit down and do a plan, I can definitely do one for you. It's going to be, it's going to give me some time, but my, 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 my goal is to give it to at least five people on this venue. Uh, and actually maybe I have, I'm, I should be having a class coming up and I was thinking about trying to squeeze you into that class and give you some seats for the class. So the class will be, like I mentioned before, um, the class will be um, financial literacy, uh, debt and credit, and of course, how to become a hammer. So I haven't gotten those dates yet, but when I do, for those that win that one, we'll, um, we'll, uh, I will give you that schedule and I will have you attend those classes. So it's three courses and that's it. And in doing that course, I still would do a plan. So no matter what I do with anybody, I always do a plan. That's why I start out with, well, that's why I start out um, with scripture. <laughs> My daughter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's why I start out with um, that you have to have a plan because in order for you to know anything for me, I always start with the education in, in weapons. So I guess I'm going to just go ahead and jump into um, the Yeah, tell us what, what questions and how many questions and it's the fastest typers, right? Into yeah. the chat box. Yeah. So, so in the beginning, in the beginning of my presentation, I talked about mindset. Now I know it's going to be probably hard to probably remember unless you took notes. Um, what were the four mindsets that, uh, that I mentioned? The first person that could mention that, I will actually give you a complimentary shirt, which is from the link I put on there. Now I will give you a complimentary shirt from my weapon shirt and you choose whether you want it to be Isaiah or Corinthians. So whoever can name the four mindsets, I will give you a complimentary shirt. Four mindsets. Yes. So, so one of them is comfortable. <laughs> Just to give y'all a hint, that's one of them. What are the other three? That's the only one I can remember. <laughs> Reflection. Well, is that too hard? 
I don't see anyone writing. Yeah. I don't know. Uh oh. I could be wrong, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember fear. <laughs> nah. Was it panic? So it, I can't. It, it, so it's four types of mindsets. One is comfortable. The other one is searching. So if you give me the other two. Andy, you got all of them wrong except the one that he gave you already. <laughs> the one is, is inspired one of them? Yes. Okay, so Shirley got inspired and you gave comfortable and searching. So we're just missing one. This one. All right, Shirley, see if you can get the other one. If you're not, if you're not, if you, you could be expired, but you're also going to be, uh, begins with a D. <laughs> Comfortable searching. Desperate? Oh, there we go. There we go. Desperate. There we go. That's right, what sir. I was getting confused with fear. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Shirley, okay. Shirley got both of them before, right before Dean. Yes, right before Dean. So inspired, so you either inspired, you're desperate, or you're searching, or you're comfortable. And, and that's just the way, I, I look at that when, you, when you're looking at finances, those are the ways you, that's the way people's minds are working when it comes to money. If people are, are like developing big business because they're inspired, or they're desperate, or they, they're, trying to, they're desperate trying to get out of debt because, you know, life is crazy, or they're comfortable, you know, they, they're just living in, you know, with comfort. So I will... Uh, Shirley, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably need your address later on. And then what I can do is I ship one of those shirts to you and I need to know your size. So good job on that one. That was awesome. Um, so let me look at the other offering. Okay. All right. So I said I'm doing a class. The class I will be doing will be coming up soon. Uh, the dates haven't been announced. Um, and actually, the funny thing is the group is gonna, it's, it's actually another SDA group that I just finished doing a presentation with, by the way, just a couple of days ago. Uh, <laughs> just coincidental. Um, so I'm about to do a class and I want to give, I want to give away seats in order to get seats. This is going to be easy. Actually, if you have Facebook, sorry, if you guys don't have Facebook, but those that got Facebook, if you go on Facebook, the first five people that go on Facebook, go to financial weapons management. I will give you a seat to that class. First five people that go to Facebook and go to Financial Weapons Management, and like the page. Oh, okay, I was going to say, how are we going to verify that? So like the page. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think I already have your page liked. Ah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Does it work retroactively true. like this? <laughs> well, hey, man, if you, I guess, yes, yeah, since you've been following me, yeah, I guess I can count you on that one. No, no, I, I'll <laughs> give it to somebody else. All right. Okay. Pastor Enoch, done. Yes. All you right. got one, Pastor. All Surely right. done. That one too. So the first five. So this is the first five. If you got it, if not, it's gonna be just those two. But um, those are the first five. Dean done. Dean done. There's three. All right, those three. So two more, and I, I'm gonna close that one down. And, and finally, I have another hard one. Now, this hard one is important. Let's see if y'all remember it. Um, it's on the same slide. What are the reasons why we have financial challenges? I just need at least two. And what I will give is I will have two complimentary hats. And I will ship them to you. These are my hats. Two reasons why we have financial challenges. At least two. I know one of them, but Andy, discipline couldn't be. It'd be lack of discipline, wouldn't it be? That's what I Okay, Ella says behavior and mismanagement. That's two right there. That's one. Yes, that's true. Who's that? Too much now? debt, not enough income. Both. See, I got all four of them now. So who? All right. All right. Okay, there we go. So Ella and Pastor Enoch. Ella and Pastor Enoch. Okay. Can, they, can they private message you? Yes, they can. Uh, Titus is going to like that cap. <laughs> yes. So, uh, oh, why am I writing down? So, Pastor Enoch. So, basically, yes, I'm going to need your address. I can ship it to you. The hats I got here, 
the, for the shirt, I got to go online and order it. Uh, for those, if you want to support and you want to get a shirt, feel free. I did, so I did provide you the link that uh, when, I, when we first started talking, you click on the link. Um, you can order either one of the shirts with either Corinthians or uh, Isaiah on the back of it. The Isaiah font has changed because I didn't like the previous one. Um, but um, yes, um, this, the shirt is made in Texas from a friend that I used to go to church with back in the day. So it's just a blessing that I've been meeting some awesome guys. The guy that made my logo happened to be a good, strong Christian too. So it's, it, it's, it's just an awesome blessing just to be able to do any of this stuff and uh, present in front of you guys. Dennis, are you still in Hawaii or no? Yes, ma'am. I live, I still live in Aia. You live in Aia. Well, can I, is it too, is it, can I offer the church as the coordinator, Joanne? I mean, would that be easier? Because a lot of the people that in the pri previous ones have been um, coming to the church to pick it up. Oh, okay. Prices. I don't know if that makes it easier for you. That, that, it could, it, that could make it easy. Um, is that okay, Joanne and, and Pastor Enoch? Yeah, thumbs up. Um, so then again, Joanna, could you put the the office phone number on the chat, and then we can coordinate that way. Yeah, it's been working fine. So I don't. I think nobody's complained. They're happy to pick it up here. So it seems like a central. You know, Shirley's picked up um, multiple prizes. She is like on fire, and so she knows where it is. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So that's the. Uh... Yeah, because Shirley got the game. She actually Shirley gave me her address. Because I know for the shirt, I can just deliver to the, her house anyway because it's, I mean, it's being mailed from Texas anyway. Um, I'm not even, uh, uh, the person that makes it for me, he just delivers so that I can go straight to the house. But for the hats, I can definitely bring it down to, um, to Manoa. Well, so, uh, Could you name the name the um, Facebook page again for those of us that want to go on? And I mean, it's not for the seats. We just want to know what your Facebook page was. So my Facebook page is called Financial Weapons Management. So all I did is all I did is threw finance in front of weapons, so that people know it's actually a financial company, not a not a, a company selling guns. <laughs> um, so uh, def definitely check out the Facebook page. I'm always posting content. Um, I share, uh, I, I share a little bit, a few things. I also have a Facebook page. It's also um, called Weapons Management. Now, the Facebook page is just called Weapons Management. I usually post some of that on to my Facebook. Um, I, I post YouTube, I'm sorry. I have a YouTube page. I actually post some of that on my Facebook page. But if you go to YouTube and type in Weapons Management and you see my logo, you will find material there. I have uh, similar, some material that I share today and that material, you know, one is strictly, it's, it's separated. It's one just it's going in detail about debt. One is going in detail about tithing. One is going in detail about relationships or how our relationships deal with money. And uh, for those that are military, it talks about, uh, I got one called the Military Millionaire, which talks about all the entitlements in the military. And I utilize them all. So I teach, I talk about how you should utilize them. And if anybody have any questions about those, I be, feel free to give me a holler. Because I, I, I've been very thorough at utilizing all my military benefits. I do have disability. I'm, uh, I, get, uh, so I get disability rating. I got a GS job. I'm a reservist. Uh, yeah, um, I used, I, um, when I was in active duty, I used tuition assistance to pay for my, my master's. And I transferred my GI bill to my daughter. So that's why I'm going to be using her, her 529 to pay for her private school because she's going to have our college paid for but for those that are military, if you know military members, give, give, uh, refer them to me. I'll make sure I walk them through that because I want them to learn to utilize the tools they have so that they can set their family up for success. And the church number, that's 808, correct? Yes. So it's 808-988-4343. So... So uh, definitely, uh, like I said, I definitely appreciate the invite. Um, this is definitely, like I said, a great opportunity. I uh, hope you guys learned something from this. Um, if you, uh, for those that are considering, like I said, if uh, you did want to work with me, I do a plan first. I never, I don't, so basically I don't move forward with a fee until I know what we can do. And, 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 I, and I feel that's honorable because I, wanna, I, I don't wanna send you up a creek and I'm not, in, I'm, and truth be told, I'm not even in it for the money. 
I'm not. And, and, and Kenneth, uh, a little bit of a tough question. So if somebody is upside down, do you have resources that you point them towards or because because it's it's going to be tough and i think those people are the ones that probably need the most help uh, so yes i do so right now i, I so for instance the plan if you especially upside down that means you got a lot of debt the plan is going to give you the first thing then i do so the, the class i call i have called how to be a henry it talks about all that it talks about all those kind of vehicles it talks about how to make extra money it talks about ways to you know leverage you know right now i'm researching more vehicles so me make so, so i can help myself make money but i do uh walk you through how to get yourself out of that hole so yes i i do that so the thing is um i like i said I, but i don't charge you though so and once i give you that plan i i can't do that so what i do is i try to give you other venues to make money sure and one last thing is that zoom uh, or the class that you were talking about seats is that are those zoom seats or how, how are yeah. you doing those classes this, this, this will be on zoom <laughs> okay thank you yeah this will be on zoom so people want to know how do we contact you okay so well if you did go to my facebook page um you have uh you should have my email on there um and you also have should have my phone number on there on the facebook page um okay i can actually i can copy it and send it to you as well Cool part about technology these days. Copy, and I can put it in the chat if you want me to. Face. Let me see if it worked out. So below is my number, and so there's a square, and then my email. So I have a, a, a Kenneth at weaponsmanagement.com, and that's my uh, that's my email, and my phone number is 808-769-6999. Oh crap. Did you just put that in the did you put that in the chat box? Well, you know what? I said it privately to Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't see it. Let me do that again. And let me go up. And And I, I don't mention the, 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 the hats. If somebody wanted to consider buying a hat, you can go to the square. Um, I sell my hats through square. The hat I'm, I'm offering out too. So if you were considering getting one of those, that's another way to get the hats. But um, yeah, so that's, that's my phone number and my email. So if you want to reach out to me and you saw a dialogue with me and we can go back and forth. Uh, so um, as I mentioned on the ax early on the last slide is that if you want to start the process, I always start with a plan and the plan going to provide you, which I said on the last slide, is your debt-free day, your savings plan. So it, even though you're in a hole, and to answer Andy's question, even though you're in a hole, it's still going to give you a, a vision on how much uh, do you need to save to get to a certain goal. Um, and like I said, what I do is I start searching and finding ways to give you uh, ways to develop income. I, I actually am working with now accountants and attorneys. Um, I actually had a meeting with them just the other day. I actually gave them this presentation, so they came. They gave me feedback. So I have uh, those for those that are doing pretty well and want to like kind of come up with a trust. I work with accountants and attorneys now to help the, um, those that are needing those in individuals because my goal is to get everyone into that position to the point where they're going to need now accountants and trusts and so forth because that is my vision and that's where I'm going to. So I developed this company to help the the, the person that is in the hole and also get that person to that level. Um, because as um, Enoch was saying earlier, is that I was that guy, I got out of debt and I, had, and I spent years and years not knowing what to do with my money. And when I found out, when I, when I started learning all these tools, I was mad. I was a little upset because I was like, I could have done this so much sooner. So when I, I created this company, because the last thing I want to do is have somebody else do the same thing. Because the stuff I'm doing now, yeah, I would have been doing pretty good if, um, if I knew about it. And actually, it's funny because some of these vehicles that I do, people told me about it, but I didn't trust it. But it was also because no one, they didn't educate me on about it. They just say, hey, go check out this website. And uh, they didn't teach me. So what I do is I teach anything I do. I teach you how it works and use it so that way the trust is there before you even touch it. And you understand the risk. Because if you, once you understand the risk, you learn real quick like, oh, this is not, a, it's not an issue at all. 
But if you don't understand a risk, you don't trust it. And I get it. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I met with a financial planner and, and of course, you know, they want invest money in stocks. And I just feel like that's such a one-sided, <laughs> one-sided uh, plan. So, so anyway, I appreciate what you're sharing tonight. Yeah. And, and actually I was, I was on the cuff of getting my series six. So I backed out, I backed out for multiple reasons, but um, the reason why they, they're going to talk that way, because once you get your license, you only can market it one, the, the vehicle that you're licensed in. So when I learned that I, 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 I stand down. And I mean, and, 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 and I was, and here's how serious I was about, I fast about this. <laughs> I fast about it. Meaning I wanted to make sure that, that was the right decision because I knew I wanted to get in this and I knew I wanted that license. And after making that decision, I knew that that was now the, the thing I didn't need because I could still, that's why I do charge because Lisa gives me something. Well, thank you, Kenneth. Um, I hope those of you who want to contact him do um, and hopefully on your Facebook, when you have the seats available, for those of us who, who didn't win it, we can maybe access it that way somehow. Yes. And um, I want to say, for those of you who want to come back next week, it's going to be Pastor Ina talking about spiritual health. That's the last little foundation of, of our whole person approach to health. So, um, Pastor, do you want to say anything about what you'll be talking about? Well, I think that um, so, somewhat self-explanatory, but you know, it's it's a challenge living through these times that we are. And I, I think that if we're honest, uh, there's many areas that um, that uh, that we're challenged in, and it does force us back to what our roots are, what our foundation is. And so, for some, they're saying, "Hey, um, you know, maybe it's a new idea, but it's like, where do you reach to?" And I think that we all have something there at the foundation, but some of us don't like what we see and others say, wow, yeah, that foundation's important, but I'm too stressed out right now to get there or I have too much going on right now. How do I, how do I find peace? How do I find um, security, you know, even, even living during these times? And so my, my plan is to give you some tools some things that, that um, you can do, you know, even day one, the moment you get off Zoom, some things that you can do to, to build up your, your spiritual life um, so that we can weather the storm. Uh, so yeah, look forward to it. So yeah, come join us, come back again next week. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Um, yes, I think you. everyone was done with questions, but if they have questions, they can email you or contact you, right? Yes, so thank you so much for, for coming in and presenting to us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. I think we're done then. Thank you again. See you next week. All right, guys.